General arrangement drawing shows the profile and plan views of the 23-foot Sri Lankan undeck fishing boat for lagoon and inshore fishing. The design is based on existing 19- and 23-foot boats operating in the waters of Sri Lanka. This new design has an improved shape that contributes to stability and safety of the vessel. It also incorporates standards of strength in the construction of the vessel. The 3D render shows the new shape of the vessel from all angles. Noteworthy is the slightly wider hull with improved spray rails for better performance underway. The boat also has an increased beam that contributes towards stability while hauling nets aboard, as well as a larger fordic area for working on hand lines and for the crew to rest at sea. Hull plug construction starts with the CNC cutting of the hull section frames from transom to bow. This is followed by the assembly of a jig on which the frames will be erected. The jig comprises of two longitudinal wooden beams slightly greater than the overall length of the hull being screwed into the shop floor. The position of the frames and their supporting vertical structures are then marked and erected along the base frame. This assembly is constantly checked for alignment and level using a piano wire over the link and a water tube and spirit level to ensure that all surfaces are level. When the frames are being erected, the keel level as well as the level between the port and starboard sides of each frame need to be constantly checked. The frames are erected at equal distances of 750 mm in this case as per the hull plug construction drawing provided. Once all the frames have been secured, the next step is cutting notches along each frame to house longitudinal wooden battens, which will eventually support the plywood skin of the hull pattern. The longitudinal wooden battens may now be laid in position. The straight sections of the boat can take thicker sections, whereas the curved surfaces, such as the bow, would need thinner and more flexible battens, sometimes placed closer together to form the curved shape of the bow. Once this batten framework is in place, it can be visually inspected for evenness and any protrusions removed prior to application of the plywood skin. The plywood skin will commence on the flatter surfaces of the boat. The plywood sections will be either screwed in or secured in place with headless nails. The edges and joining lines of plywood panels on the curved surfaces need to be beveled and filed to join smoothly at all intersections. A little care and time spent at this stage saves hours of fairing undulations in the final stages of the surface finish. Next, the ply surface is covered with resin or epoxy fillers. The filler putty, once hardened, can be easily sanded down, undulations refilled, and the surface resanded until a satisfactory even surface is achieved. The surface can now be sprayed with an epoxy or polyurethane primer. Two or more coats may be applied before the sanding process begins for the high-gloss surface finish. Sanding is done using different grades of sandpaper on a foam or wooden block. Generally on a flat running surfaces, sanding in a diagonal direction using long strokes is favorable to achieve an even finish. The sanded surface needs to be periodically wiped down and visually inspected for undulations, which could be resprayed and sanded down again to achieve the smooth finish. Once this process has been completed, the entire hull needs to be washed with water and wiped dry to ensure it is free of dust and grit. Now the waxing process can begin. A total of five to seven layers of wax needs to be applied and wiped down with a flannel, allowing for adequate drying time of the wax between each application. By this stage, the entire surface should have a high gloss and must be visually inspected for any dull spots that need further application of wax polish. The hull is now ready for casting of the mold and the flanges and locating dowels required to be fitted in place. They need to be finished once again to the high gloss surface to enable the smooth release of the hull mold. The shape of the boat and its edges will determine the choice of a single or partitioned mold. In this case, we have a two-part mold and we will study its construction in the following section. The hull mold starts with the hull plug finished to an ultra-fine surface smoothness. In this case, the decision is to build this hull mold in two parts. A partition of ply is fixed along the central line of the hull plug with dowels in place for later matching the two halves precisely. The centerline partition runs from the transom of the boat along the keel 
and all the way to the top of the stem. After one side of the partition has been waxed suitably, the application of tooling gel coat, which is generally in a bright orange or green begins. Once the gel coat has been applied to the required thickness, reinforcement glass mat layers are bonded in place and both sides of the centerline partition completed with the required layout schedule as per the structural design. Next, the external reinforcement is marked with fiberglass tapes and performed frames are placed and reinforced to the required thickness. On completion of the external FRP framing reinforcement of the hull plug, a metal framework supporting the entire plug is bounded to the structure. Any welding of the metal structure needs to be done with care and points of contact with the plug bonded in place. Finally, caster wheels can be attached to the metal structure to facilitate easy movement of the structure. The completed mold will later be released from the plug and turned over into an upright position. The construction of the deck plug commenced with erection of deck frames on top of the hull plug. During erection, the alignment and level of all frames was thoroughly checked. Next, wooden battens put in place to support the plywood skin layer. Other intricately shaped deck sections were fitted in place, and all joints and uneven butts sanded down. The transom engine well developed along with the gunnels merging into the foredeck, and all edges and corners rounded off, and the application of epoxy putty filler started. The epoxy party filler is used to fill and sand down any undulations on the deck surface. Once the entire surface has the satisfactory finish, the deck plug is ready for the application of a finish layer sprayed on. The final step will be the white sprayed on polyurethane coat is finished to a high gloss surface shine, ready for the application of wax and construction of the deck mold similar to the plug mold constructed earlier. The general arrangement drawing details the boat in profile and plan view, with the dimensions listed within the drawing. The construction will follow the lamination schedule, detailing the glass fiber layers in the structural drawings. Various areas of the boat will have different layup thicknesses to cope with the stresses of the boat moving through the water. The construction commences with the application of gel coat. In case of multiple colors, masking tapes are used to define the lines of separation between colors. Each part of the hull mold is initially gel-coated separately and covered with a few fiberglass layers. The polyester resin is applied by brush or mohair roller, after which smaller steel rollers are used to push the resin into the fiberglass material, removing any air bubbles or avoid spaces. Note that excess resin must be squeezed out and removed from the laminate. The two hull parts of the mold are then brought together and the rest of the fiberglass layers laminated in. Any other fitting or transom plate is seen can be polished with wax to the final finish before the part is laminated. After completion of the hull skin, single-layered frame formers are put in place to form the structural grid of stiffeners within the boat. Once these are placed, they can be laminated over and bonded in with several layers of glass mat. Next, the central line keel of the boat is reinforced with glass fiber strands and semi-circular pipes are placed along the bottom to allow the passage of bilge water to flow to the aft of the boat. Once again, single-layered frame forms are trimmed and put in place to form the transverse and longitudinal framing grid that reinforces the bottom of the boat. The transform of the boat will be reinforced with marine ply and further covered with layers of fiberglass to form a high-strength load-bearing part of the boat capable of bearing the engine and transmitting its power through the hull. The deck mold is similarly layered with glass fiber and a reinforcing framework. Once both hull and deck are complete, the deck is lowered on the hull and bonded along all the joint line. Hull partitions or bulkheads are bonded in place. Expanded polystyrene EPS, foam blocks are locked in the forward and aft of the boat as well as along the bottom sides under the floor plates and gunnels. It is this foam flotation that forms the reserve buoyancy of the boat, ensuring it unsinkable even when completely swamped. The textured flooring provides a good foothold while working in the boat. The flooring is press-fitted and held down with weights till the resin cures. Floorboards along the centerline are removable. Finally, various stainless steel fittings, such as the ball hooks, stem hook bollards and other fittings are drilled and bolted in place. 
The transom is fitted with an aluminium checkered plate to ensure good attachment to the boat, while the bow has a rubber fender for pulling the boat ashore. Other fittings, such as the navigation lights, are also put into place to complete the build of the boat. Life-saving and firefighting equipment are movable items and taken on board when out fishing. The completed boat will be tested for its stability, flotation, and performance underway.